Cooper comes up, hits it. Yeah! Oh my god! What a goal! What a goal by Big Bobby! Go, Cleach. There's the goal! Richie! We're back for another edition of the official Scotland podcast. Sheffield United and Scotland striker Ollie McBurney joins us. Ollie, not giving you much time to settle. <laughs> thanks for sitting down with us. How are you getting on? Good, mate. Yeah, not too bad. How are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. I'm uh, looking forward to sitting down with you and getting th- through a few things, but uh, have you adjusted and settled from the COVID tests and everything you've had to go through as you got Yeah, there? I've been here about 11 minutes, so it's been, uh, <laughs> it's been good so far, but um, now good to see a few of the boys so far and... Uh, We've got a meeting meeting in a bit, so yeah. um, I get to see uh, the rest of the boys then. And um, yeah, I just can't wait to get going. It's a crazy quick turnaround for you boys. Um, obviously, you were just playing yesterday afternoon, straight up the road into the national duty. How do you find that turnaround? Is it? It must be quite a lot physically as well as mentally at times. Yeah, of course, it's tough, but you know we're kind of used to it now. Um, you know the, especially with everything that's going on. You know it don't make anything easier and. Uh, you know, being footballers as well, it makes it just that mo- a bit, a little bit more demanding. But like I said, we used to it was no excuses from from our side. You know, it's football is what we're paid to do. So all, all smiles around here. Yeah, you'll hear the older pros probably talk about the off seasons they had, which weeks and weeks and months at times on end. It's yeah, envi- just, uh, enviously we hear about those <laughs> yeah. off weeks. I think we had twenty days this year, which was days. even for me. I think it was the first time I've ever. I've ever trained on my birthday. My birthday is June the fourth, so it's the first time I'm, I've ever not been in a different country for my birthday yeah. as well. But like I say, everyone's adjusting to different things in the rest of the world, and, and so are we. Yeah, I take it when you have such a small time off. Obviously, you get a wee bit of time away. You'll do what you can. Maybe different circumstances this year, right enough. But you, you physically can't really change shape much in that period of time. Especially right? this year, yeah. uh, I think. In a normal year, you know, you'd kind of get a plan from the club and yeah. uh, like a fitness and an eating plan. But this year, it was kind of. In a normal plan, it would be for the first two weeks of the plan would be do absolutely nothing anyway. Yeah. So this week it was basic. This year it was basically do nothing, and yeah. then I think we had to do two two bits of exercise the week before we came back because you know it was more about trying to get your bodies to recover from from the grueling season that we had last yeah. year um, than kind of building any fitness or anything like that. So from that point of view, it was quite nice that I didn't have to do any running in the off season, but I would have liked to have been a little bit longer. Yeah, you, t- <clears throat> you touched on that season that you, you boys had last season, obviously the incredible heights that he's hit. I'm sure maybe a lot of the media were maybe, you were the surprise packages if you like, but I'm sure that wasn't a surprise internally, that, that season that you strung together. Yeah, no, of course, you know, it was it was a season that we'll, we'll all remember for the rest of our careers and, you know, I'm sure a lot of the, the Sheffield United fans will as well. Um, the one thing that obviously puts a bit of a downer on it is that the fans couldn't yeah. couldn't share it with us at the end, which, you know, we would love to have been, but... You know, it was an unbelievable season, like you say. You know, we were always confident within ourselves that we would never kind of be in the relegation drop. We were kind of confident that we would stay way above that and keep our heads clear. But then to finish, I think I think we finished ninth in the end, yeah. which in the end was a bit of a disappointment from the position that we were in. But I think we just, we'd run our race and in the end it was a little bit too far for us. But, you know, like I say, it was something so special and the boys worked so hard and there was, there was such a good group in that dressing room and, and, and they all thoroughly deserved it and... You know, like I said, no one gave us it. We we earned everything that we got last year. I guess that's just the crazy part of football. At times when so early in the season already, and maybe the results haven't picked up yet, that there's all of a sudden a bit of pressure on that. Yeah, the life of, of course. Football. You know, like you say, you know, I think if we'd have finished seventeenth and scraped on, then the, the 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 people would be saying a lot of different things <laughs> yeah, than we true. would be now. But because we set we've set that bar so high, like we did last year, you know, it's down to us to to keep the bar where it is and try and get to them levels from last year. And you know, you know, it's it's been a tough start. Was it the first game we went two 0 down within five minutes to Wolves and then kept it nil nil for the rest of the game and arguably dominated the rest of the game. The second game we're down to ten men after I think eleven minutes. The third game it's lose eighty seventh minute uh, concede an eighty seventh minute goal and then obviously we played Arsenal yesterday and there's a tough game that we lost two one as well. So you know on paper it's four defeats but you know there's a great there's a great set of boys in there with a great. Um, mentality and you know we know that we we can bounce back and maybe this international break has come at a good place for us where we can all get away and go and concentrate on something else apart from the Premier League and then you know I'm sure when we when we get back ready for the Fulham game I think it's ideal for us to come back to. A whole host of you boys playing yesterday as well obviously you're joined by a fellow Scottish Ollie uh, recently <laughs> yeah. as well. He's, ne- he's taking my place at the minute yeah. <laughs> nah Burke he's there yeah there's me Burke and Flecky and obviously KT was on the other side as well so 
real Scottish base, but I think it's only good for, for the national team that there's so many players playing at, at the highest level of football and you know, four four Scot international Scottish players um in one game is, is something that we we really enjoyed to see and then obviously we watched the game after us and it was McGinn and <laughs> yeah. uh, and the Aston Villa boys taking the mick out of Liverpool as well, out of Robo and Liverpool, so yeah. Scottish everywhere. Yeah, well, John again made a good point afterwards. He said, Andy's won enough recently. Yeah. <laughs> he he has to be fair. Now. I don't think Robbo will be satisfied <laughs> with that knowing Robbo, but yeah. he has he has definitely won everything that you need. So um, I think he'll let McGinn have that one. Uh, yeah, no, but joking aside, like you say, that the level that a lot of the Scottish boys are playing at the minute, a whole whole season the Premier League and you know in, in Europe as well. It's it's great to see that for for the national team as we look ahead to a big international break, isn't it? Of course, yeah, it can only be positive, you know, the, the, the higher the boys are playing um, week in, week out, it's, it's only a good thing for, for, the, for the national team, like you say, and you know, that we already know the quality that's in this national team anyway, so yeah. um, that, that, that doesn't need to be spoke about too much, but like you say, the higher that we're all playing at, it, it only beads well for, for the rest of the team. Yeah. How does it feel for you, Ollie, always being back on the international scene, pulling on the, on the shirt and being back around it? Obviously, you've represented your country at youth level and you've travelled far and wide to, to pull on the shirt. Uh, you're a committed player, but being back here now, how, what does it mean? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the proudest for me. It's, uh, for me, it's the pinnacle of football, is, yeah. is international football. I've always said it. And like you say, I think from under 19s, 21s, all the way up, um, it's always a proud one when I get to come away and represent Scotland and not just but for me but for my family as well you know I think I still to this day think that my my debut against Costa Rica is the proudest day of my dad's well <laughs> I think it's my dad's life to be fair yeah. um, <laughs> no offence to me and my brother being born but you know that's for him that was that was that was always the one that he always speaks about and um, you know for, for me to wear the number nine shirt at Hamden is something that I always dreamed about as a kid and to be able to do that and to, to carry on doing that is, is, is really special. I'm sure you have, as a you know a professional sportsman, Ollie, you'll have that drive and commitment. But see, when you've got that extra motivation, does that give a, a lot more to the game at times as well? 100%, you? yeah. You know, For me, one of the things is, is trying to make my family proud and yeah. kind of achieve things that, that, that they not, don't expect me to, but you know that keep exceeding their expectations and... And um, like I say, keep making them proud. And you know, like I say, that day for for my d my dad was there in the crowd, my mum was there in the crowd, and you know, for for all my family that day was a was a real big thing for them. So keep wanting to do things like that and, and representing myself at the highest level. That, that's the aim. Yeah, I mentioned the fact that you've travelled far and wide for your country. You were obviously on the Peru and Mexico trip as you spoke about, and you hit the post, didn't you, on that trip? The Mexico as well. game. Yeah, 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 my mum and dad were both at that game as oh, well. To be yeah, fair, yeah. so. Um, yeah, I think that the I'm not sure about the post. <laughs> the, it was a bit square. I think it should have, it should have come off the inside and gone in. But exactly. now that's the, the the fine margins in football. You know that oh, goes in, and everything's a different story. But it's part of parcel of being a striker and and being a footballer. These things happen, and you know hopefully that one will drop in soon. That's just gonna say that as a striker, that's what you live and breathe off, isn't it? That's the thought of getting that first Scotland goal as well for the first team. Of course, you've scored at youth level, but. That would be huge for you and your dad, of course. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I remember that bit so vividly. That as well, Johnny Russell come back inside on his left foot and crossed it, and then I've just flicked on the header. And to be fair, when I when I headed it, I thought it had gone in yeah. and come off so clean. But yeah, no, like I say, you know, I'm I'm not one to kind of get down about things. You know, I know that there's there's periods you'll go through with strikers where you're not scoring and you're not getting chances, but it's just down to me to to win that chance to come to be right there and ready to take it. Yeah. What was that trip like for you, actually, all as well? Because a lot of boys that are now very regular on the scene, you know, like John McLaughlin, Kenny McLean, yeah, yeah. yourself. That must have been a good trip for getting all those guys together as well. Definitely was, and not just that, but seeing them places where I don't think I'd ever see... Um, I don't think I'll ever go back to Lima or Mexico City <laughs> again, ever again, to be fair, but... You know, being able to say I've been to those places and, and like you say, with some of the boys that that were really in the main squads yeah. that like now are in the main squads, you know, me and Kenny have become really, yeah, in particular, real close friends and we're always usually um, roommates. I'm, I'm going to move my bed into his room this time because we're not allowed <laughs> to stay together. But um, <laughs> now, nah, you know, it was it was an amazing trip um, seeing them places and, and playing at the, the Mexico Stadium in particular and even the Peru game because it was before they'd... I think it was somewhat crazy. It was the first time they'd qualified for a major tournament yeah. in a while, so that the stadium was sold out and the atmospheres were crazy. Yeah. All the mental South Americans and <laughs> you know things like that will always stick with you. And like I say, my mum and dad were both at those games as well. So right. you know, for them as well, it's, it's experiences that we will never forget. Yeah, you spoke about Kenny there, and obviously the setup here. It's for people and for fans listening in that aren't 
aware of it. It's a bit different, obviously, these meetups at the moment, given the fact that you boys can't really do that much, can you? Yeah, <laughs> right. it was it was kind of limited what we could do yeah. before the COVID anyway, <laughs> when we come away, but now it's it's so crazy, really. Yeah. Like you say, everyone's in their own room. The, the socialising's kept to a limited yeah. kind of resource. No one's allowed to do anything that you don't have to do. and. Exactly. Yeah, it's strange times, but it's strange times in the world, isn't it? So, it. you know, everyone else is trying to get used to it and adjust into it, but the, the same happening here, you know, it's, it's, it's all very strange and peculiar, but these things that we have to get on get on with and, and try and make the best of. That's it. I don't know, it's obviously from the, a place of health and safety of course, that has to come from it. It's always the, always the main yeah, thing. But you boys will be uh, creative with how you can pass the time, I'm sure, you and Kenny in particular. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll find something. To, when, we're allowed to, when we're allowed to spend some time together, I'm sure we'll find something to pass the time. No, yeah. Kenny's a great kid. We, uh, we got on, uh, we bonded straight away from the first, the first time we met. I think it yeah. was... It might have even been that trip that was, was the it? first time, or yeah. the, maybe the trip before, maybe the Costa Rica game at home. It might yeah. have been that game, uh, and then ever since then we've been roomies. Every time we come away, yeah. and you know, I, yeah, he's a good kid. I'll, I'll leave <laughs> the rest of it. That's <laughs> he's a good kid. Kids, there's a few next stories question. in there. Nah, but nah, nah, next <laughs> question. <laughs> we'll move on very swiftly, <laughs> will we? Um, we were speaking about that potential first goal. Ollie. Yeah. Um, have you thought, is it the sort of thing that you think about that if you were to score that first goal for Scotland, do you know what you do, how you would celebrate it, or does it just completely come from the heart? Nah, yeah, nah, it's, it's not one of them at all. Uh, it does hurt me, it really does hurt me that I haven't scored yet, for, if I'm being completely yeah. honest with you. It's one of them things that, you know, I've done a lot in my career so far. I've turned 24 and I've played in every division from the conference up to the Premier League yeah. and I've scored in every division and made my international debut and I've done everything and I've, there's a lot of things that you know I've kind of ticked off and, and for me the one thing that I haven't done that I really want to do is to to score at international levels and not just score one but score score goals so yeah. it's um it looms over me a little bit and um, but you know there's no point thinking about it too much you know I just need to when I get my opportunity if I put, get my opportunity to play is to try and get myself in the position and then when I'm in the position just be just be in the right frame of mind and, yeah. and do what I do so yeah, it, it, it's one of them. It, it, you do think about it, but you can't you can't loom on it too much. Yeah, you can't, much. Afford, to yeah, you can't yeah. afford to do much, especially in, like I say, it's the pinnacle. It's the pinnacle of football, and you know you're not going to get six, seven chances a game. You might get one chance a game, and just got to be re ready to take it. Thursday would be an okay time. Thursday for that, would be a <laughs> a delightful time for, for me to take it. If I'm being honest, it's it's the sort of stuff that that you do dream of. Um, but um, listen, we'll not talk too much, and yeah. we'll see what happens. And, and fingers crossed. It's just obviously when I hear you talk so passionate about it, Ollie, like, from your personal perspective, I think sometimes fans and people can forget that the person behind it at times. Do you find it challenging when you hear people maybe question your commitment or whatever it may be towards the national team? Yeah, I feel like for me, I feel like people are well within their right to, to challenge and, and question my ability or my yeah. my my footballing wise. That's more than fair enough. You know, I'm a footballer. That's that's what I'm here to do. And if people don't like the way I play or don't agree with me as a footballer, that's fine. But yeah, for, for me, the hard one is the commitment because you know, ever since I was a kid, I've been a Scottish. I've seen myself as being Scottish. I've been a Scotsman. I've told the story many times where England were playing and me and my brother would yeah. go to school with Scotland flags painted on our face. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that one does hurt me. And you know. The football one hurts my family more than it hurts me, but I'm used to that stuff. So, you know, I'm kind of a love-hate person or player, whatever you like. So a lot of people like to like to not like me. Um, and my, my mum and dad like to read that stuff, which I keep telling them to stop reading because it's never going to get better. But, you know, the more the older I've got, the, the more mature I've got and the, the more I've realised that you're never going to please everybody, you know what I mean? And especially the, the way I am as a person and as a player, I'm, I'm definitely not going to please everybody, so... That side of it's fine, but yeah, like I say, you know, everyone knows me and all the boys in the squad know me and, and know how much I, I want to be here and, and help yeah. the team as much as possible. Of course, and like you say, you've grown up in England supporting Scotland. <laughs> you've done some hard yards, I'm sure you took a bit of stick. Yeah, growing up in England. Yorkshire, growing up yeah. in Leeds uh, um, with a broad Yorkshire accent, me and my little brother with Scotland shirts and, yeah. and Scotland flags painted on our face. It didn't go down too well, but we didn't see the problem at the time. Of course, of course. <laughs> it was only till about 14 when I started realising that people would see that maybe it's a bit strange, but... Uh, yeah, like I say, it's just been the way. We never really had any choice. Yeah. Uh, we were told we were Scottish and we've been seen as Scottish. <laughs> and that's kind of always the way it's been in our household. So, you know, for me, representing Scotland is, is like I say, for my dad and my grandma, it's, it's the proudest one for them. You know, the, all the clubs I've played for or whatever, yeah. the, the proudest one for them's always, awesome. always been Scotland. Yeah. 
you have any particular memories growing up as a young boy in England watching Scott and any players that you watched at a young age? I always remember the McFadden goal. Me, oh, me, and, yeah. me and my brother will always remember that. I think we must have been watching that with, like, as a family, we've been yeah. watching that and and watching that. Uh, that will that's one that will always stick around. And then obviously having Fads as as my assistant manager for for a time as well, which was a surreal way because you kind of don't know how to, like you feel like you know him but you don't know <laughs> yeah, how yeah. the relationship is where you're speaking <laughs> with him um but yeah that and uh, i remember the england brazil game where we actually did go in with scotland shirts on and when ronaldinho scored we all celebrate well me and my little brother <laughs> celebrated in, in the in the assembly <laughs> yeah, hall at yeah. school which went down really well with all the pupils and the teachers so of course. that was kind of growing up for, for me and xander was was kind of that was kind of the gist of it yeah <laughs> that's great but it's I mean, yeah, as I think I touched on, you know, being a footballer, yeah, I have to get used to have, people having opinions, uh, fans oh, yeah, having course. opinions. It's a, a huge challenge, of, I'm sure, at times, when, but you have to learn to let it brush off and, and go Of off. course, yeah, you know, I'm not one to kind of keep myself to myself. You know, I could make my life a lot easier if I wanted <laughs> to, I think, but I kind of say as I do, yeah. I say as I please, and I kind of am what I am, what I am, and I am what you see, if you yeah, get what you, you know see what I mean. What you, get. what you see yeah. is what you get. So um, I get told off by my agent and my. <laughs> My coach is in everything. Sometimes I can't help myself, but you know I think a lot of people will appreciate that it comes from from me, and that I'm an honest person in terms of that, and I'm not trying to be false or be, pretend yeah. to be anything that I'm not. So, like I say, I might get myself into a bit of trouble here and now, <laughs> which I hold my hands up to. Um, but yeah, you know, it is criticism is part of football, and especially with all the platforms that the That's people it. have now, it's, it's so relatable, and we're so in touch yeah. to get to. It's so easy for people to do so. You know, maybe when I was 16, 17 and I was reading everything, but now I'm 24, then it's people can say say what they want. Whatever, okay. whatever you need to get out, get it out. <laughs> Let get it, go. it out. <laughs> get it out. Tell me how much you hate me. Do, it. do what you got to do, as long as it makes you feel better. <laughs> but I, I, honestly, aside from that, it's, it's great hearing about your, obviously your passion and your, your experiences in the game. And I think that's part of, part of the reason that it's good to, to speak to you on the podcast today and one of, the, one of the things that I was joking about when I was looking at this was obviously you talk about people maybe passing their comments. Maybe more of an old school thing will be people will talk about your, your socks being so oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the older generation of football fans. Yeah, is nah. that, is Pull that your a, socks up is one that I get regularly. Get yeah. lot, I, yeah. To be fair, when there was fans in the stadium, that's one of the ones I got. <laughs> probably one of the most that I got. Pull your socks up and I'm like, all right. right. It's quite, <laughs> fair play, pal, boy. It's quite, you know, it's... It's not really offensive, you know, I'm going to no. say. Um, yeah, they love the old um, pull your socks up one, but that's just kind of my thing. Um, it's more of a superstition thing for me than anything. Of course, but, yeah. Um, How did yeah. that actually come about? In the, I was on loan at Chester yeah. um, in a conference. I must have been about 17, and I was skinnier than I am now back then, and the, the kit, weren't, there weren't much kit, so I had a pair of socks that had all the elastic out, and for yeah. the first two games, I kept trying to pull my socks up above my knees, how I used to wear it. <laughs> And they just kept coming down. So the third game, I thought, oh, you know what? I'm just, just going to yeah. put them down. And then I scored my first professional goal. And then ever since then, I've kind of kept it since then. So Absolutely. It's more just a superstition thing now than anything. It just feels comfy. It feels yeah. weird if I, if I wear them any other way. But yeah, I'll get the, um, like you say, the older yeah. generation will always be pulling socks up. So. <laughs> it's your socks, so you do that. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know offence yeah. people so much yeah. having my socks all low, but it? it's people's opinions, like you say, isn't it? I know. And... Um, Obviously, that everyone's opinion is just how big this week could right, be yeah. for, for the national team. It's going to be m massive. Just a shame, obviously, that it's not going to be a sellout in, in many ways. But that aside, how, how do you go about preparing for a game of this size? Obviously, there's the preparation that goes in as a team, but you yourself, uh, on, on the build-up to such a big game and a big week, do you get excited, nervous excitement as well? I think you get a bit of both. You know, I'm not yeah. really want to, to get too nervous before games. I, try, I don't think it helps me too much getting nervous. Uh, you always have that excitement. Um, but I think for the main thing for for me, especially, I think I think could speak for a lot of the rest of the boys as well, is just kind of not to treat it like I want. You have to treat it kind of more normal. You have yeah. to treat it like as the rest of the games, you know, and don't try and do things you wouldn't do in a normal game because then in a game you might do things you wouldn't do in a normal exactly. game. And, yeah. you know, that nervous energy can really affect people and it has really affected me in the past. So it's yeah. one thing I try to, to stay reserved. I um, mean, obviously get myself pumped in my own way yep. and just be ready to be... Just be ready to, to take an opportunity in and, and make a difference when called upon. That's I think yeah. that's what the boys are doing. And, you know, we've got so much talent and ability in that squad, as you can see, if you watch a Premier League weekend and how many of the boys are doing so well. It's it's about time now for us to, to qualify, and I think we're ready. Yeah. Do you feel like... <laughs> as we see some faces waving in. 
It's, um, I guess that's part of, of being here and seeing the faces, isn't it? That's Maybe the Champions League winner over there. <laughs> Champions League winner. <laughs> yeah. That's all right, isn't it? No, I've not, like I said, I've literally not seen anyone exactly. yet. So I've only seen three of the boys yet. I've, only, I've not even said hello to anyone uh-huh. yet before you brought me in here to do this. So, <laughs> um, that was just Robbo saying hello. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I can't wait to see the boys, to be fair. Um, it's actually been a while, obviously, I wasn't here with the last camp, so it's been a good few months since I've seen, since yeah. I've seen everyone, really, yeah. Yeah, and how are you feeling physically at this point as well with with going into such big games? You're yeah, ready to go. Yeah, ready to go is the is the, de- the definite word. You know, I've been um, I played the first game and then I've not played the last three games, so I'm kind of itching to to get to get a game at the minute. Um, I feel fit physically. I feel yeah. good. I feel ready, um, and I feel ready to go. Yeah, and then. Um, if it comes to this is a crunch question now, I'm sure I'd, lo- I'd love to ask all the boys this question. If it comes to the point where in a crunch game we're going to penalties, you stepping up? I'm <laughs> stepping up, but I did miss one last week against Burnley, so <laughs> I think it's a bad time to ask me. But I'll always put my name in the hat. I'll always take one. But uh, yeah, I think a few of the Sheffield United fans will be screaming at the screen saying, "Now don't let him get anywhere near a penalty." Nah, I'm always putting myself for a penalty forward. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I'm a striker. I want to score goals and. Uh, I've always been the penalty takers at the club where I've, I've ever yeah. been. So, taking away that one last week, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put myself up. I a guess forward. we joke about that in a, in a way, but you can't let one miss penalty not you, can you? Oh, no, I can't. I've missed like a couple it. before, don't yeah. worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I still put my name in there. Yeah. You've got to. Nah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I think main, the main thing for me for a penalty is the confidence. Uh, yeah. If you're not feeling like you're going to take it, I wouldn't yeah, put exactly. my name forward. And I feel like that's the same with, with other people. I feel like you've put your five most confident players forward to. Um, to, to take your penalty. So, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. And, um, Obviously, you said you've barely seen anybody yet. Um, it'll be good to obviously see the manager and, and, and bed in. I've not seen a gaffer yet. Exactly. No, I've not seen anyone. No. <laughs> We've got a team meeting later tonight. It'll yeah. be um, working under Steve. What's what that experience been like as well for you? Yeah, it's been really good for me. You know, he's been um, ever since I've co- he's come in. He's been so good with me. You know, he's he came down to watch so many of the games last year, which we, which we noticed, and it really does mean a lot um, when you've got the national team manager coming to watch you. Um, he's called me up every camp, and you know he's been really good with with me. And obviously, I've not made it easy for him to be good with me with certain situations I've put myself in. Um, but he's always had my back. He's always had confidence in me. And, and like I say, it's time for me to repair a bit of that confidence. Yeah, I guess sometimes it's you may be being a bit harsh on yourself there, saying you maybe not made it easy. But the, for example, the last time, obviously there was a bit made about you yep. playing in a friendly match, mm-hmm. getting forty five minutes. But there's a lot that people don't understand that comes with that, isn't it? Of there, course, well? yeah. You know, it's hard with the communication side yeah. of everything. But you know, the the my manager at Sheffield United and the Steve Clark had, had sorted that all exactly. out between them, and it was kind of nothing to do with me. So, you know, I can understand from the outside how it looks, but it's one of them things. It's just easy to. Yeah. Easy to get on top Question, of me, innit? You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but it is what it is, you know, it was completely harmless. I'd, I'd not trained at all in pre season. I'd not trained since last season. I'd been out for, I think it was six weeks. And then I did one day of training and then went straight into a pre season game and played foot, came on at half time, which I was unaware of that I was going to be doing. But obviously, anyone in football knows that 45 minutes in a pre season friendly yeah. to run around is completely different to a, a qualifying international match. Sure. And um, that was that, that was the thing. But you know, I just, I just mean more in terms of my performances and stuff. You know, for, for Scotland, yeah. has not been where I've liked to the, the, for them to have been, and you know, I haven't carried my club form when I've been playing well into my international form, which is something that I really want to do. Yeah, and I guess at just the age of twenty four as well. You've nine caps to your name now as well. That that hunger that you speak about as well. It's a big spell coming up with some big games and a real opportunity for not just yourself but a lot of the boys in the squad, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. Like you say, there's some big games coming up, like thick and thick and thin, really. Yeah. You know, thick and fast in terms of how quickly they're coming. You know, we've got three games this camp, which is a first for me. I've never yeah. had three in a camp, but you know, I just want to get as many caps as I can for my country, and, and obviously, it's as many goals as I can as well. So you know, the more games is the more opportunity for that, and especially with massive games like the one on Thursday. And I guess as well at the top end of the pitch. Healthy, good competition. The likes of Lawrence Shank and Lyndon Dykes, these boys in the squad, you guys all fighting for places, which is what you are always going to have at a national level. Anyway. Of course, yeah. Like you say, it's the pinnacle football, and yeah. um, you you know it helps having having options there and 
making the manager's decision a hard one is what we want to do as, as, as strikers in particular. And you know whether there's one or two up there and the gaffer's got to pick that, then we want to make sure that it's a real hard for him, to, hard decision for him. And I'm sure in training this week, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. How do you find just as we start to wrap up, so that you can actually bed in and see people, <laughs> mate? Um, how how do you find the quick turnaround of international football? Are the guys coming in? <laughs> uh, I in, mean, we've only got a few days really before such a big game. It's a lot to adjust to and get up to speed with for everybody isn't it it's tough yeah you know like you say you're never going to be able to get the time on the training pitch to kind of work out a whole new plan and, and do all the sort of tactical things but you know the gaffer's really good at getting the vital information in in a yeah. short space of time so that everyone knows their jobs and knows their roles but you know it's kind of getting all good players in in a, in a formation and in tactic tactic situation where they're, they're playing at such a good level and they have such a good brain that they can adapt to them situations. And I think that's the, that's the challenge. You know, it is tough because obviously we play such a different way. If you're United to, for example, Liverpool do or Aston Villa do so, or yeah. Celtic do or Rangers do, you know, it's so hard for players to go from playing one way into two days later, you've got to play into a different system. That's the main challenge, from my opinion, is, is international football. But like I say, we're top level footballers and that's what we've got to be able to do. Yeah, and with... Potentially one of the biggest games coming up, one of the best opportunities we've got making a major tournament. Everything we spoke about from you being a young boy growing up with Scotland flag painted on your face, everything we spoke about from your dad to your experiences with Scotland, to be part of a squad that could get to a major tournament. I mean, that would just be everything, wouldn't it? It would, um, yeah, it literally would. Uh, I spoke to, it was funny, I was, we was having this conversation at the dressing, dressing ground the other day at Sheffield United yeah. and... Um, Ollie Norwood had retired from Northern Ireland and he was saying that he'd got to a Euros with Ireland and for yeah. him that was his like pinnacle. It yeah. was like he didn't need to yeah. go and try and prove anything anymore to anyone else. He was at a stage where obviously he'd retired because his body and where he'd gone and played at a Euros for his country and that was the pinnacle and that was what he'd always wanted to do as a kid was play for a, in yeah. a more European com uh, championships for his country and he'd done that so it was like yeah. a, a, a sense of fulfilment that he'd done and and that was what that he'd done and that feeling for us and I'm sure for the rest of the boys feel like it would be for me is something that I'm really really searching for yeah because obviously everything that then comes from playing at a major tournaments of course. for for a professional mm -hmm. you know that that is obviously a, a massive part of of what it can do for people's careers at so club level as well, yeah, isn't it? It's 100%. just the profile, the, the scale of it, it's mm -hmm. where you want to be, I guess. And playing it? as the best players in the world at the best tournaments in the world, in the best situations, is in knockout stages, is, 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 is what you want to do, and that's what we all want to do. Yeah, well, as we wrap up the podcast, I'm sure you've got to go see Kenny and the Kenny's boys. Kenny's waiting for is me, Kenny he's just, just rang me, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, well, um, Ollie, it's been brilliant to sit down with you, uh, it really has. Um, Great to, to chat all things Scotland and, and your career as well. And going forward, can't wait to for that first goal, of course. But with the weeks that come, all the best going forward, mate. Thank you, my man.